in the previous video we discussed about the anemia in general now in this video we'll be discussing about hemolytic anemia this anemia is due to premature and abnormal destruction of rbcs what we call as abnormal hemolysis here in this diagram we have the bone marrow where the myelite progenitors transforms into reticulocyte via erythropoiosis and this erythropoiosis is stimulated by epo hormone then this reticulocyte enters the circulation where it matures into RBCs and we know this RBC has a lifespan of 110 to 120 days and then this RBC dies off. So basically we see the normal destruction of RBCs after it is complete lifespan. This destruction or this normal destruction of RBCs stimulates the kidneys to secrete EPO hormone more and more to drive more and more erythropoiosis. But when there is some malfunction, the RBC dies off before its actual time. And that time we call it as abnormal hemolysis, which is termed as hemolytic anemia. Now let's get to the mechanism of hemolysis. It's either intravascular or the extravascular hemolysis. We see in intravascular hemolysis, the hemolysis occurs inside the vasculature. And in this case, the contents of RBCs are released into the general circulation. And due to this, we get hemoglobinemia, which in turn leads to hyperbilirubinemia. Because of all these conditions, we also get the jaundice and splenomegaly. On the other side, we have the extravascular hemolysis, which is taking place in the liver, spleen, bone marrow, lymph nodes. So typically, it involves all the reticuloendothelial system. Here in this case, we see the rise of monocytes because monocytes are hyperactive in hemolytic anemia. Furthermore, we see in extravascular hemolysis, we see the increase in lactate dehydrogenase enzyme, increase in the concentration of globin molecules, heme molecules, iron molecules, and unconjugated bilirubin proteins. Now let's get to the intravascular causes. First important cause is the prosthetic cardiac valve. Second is the proximal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, which is stimulated through complement system. Then we have the cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia, followed by thrombotic thrombocytopenia purpura and acute hemolytic transfer reactions, which involves ABO mismatch. So these are some major causes that drives the intravascular hemolysis. Now moving towards extravascular causes. It has two ways to occur, intrinsic RBC defects and extracorpuscular defects. In RBC defects, we see we have hemoglobinopathies like skill cell or thalassemia. Second is the membrane defects of RBCs like hereditary sephirocytosis and hereditary elliptocytosis. And third one is enzyme deficiency like GCPD deficiency and pyruvate kinase deficiency. And it must be noted here, G6PD, that's glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, is important enzyme in protecting RBCs. Its key antioxidative enzyme for RBCs, it eliminates reactive oxygen species that can destroy the RBCs. Now getting to extracorpuscular defects, where we have the immune-mediated hemolytic anemia like autoimmune and drug induced. It's also due to liver diseases, infections and some toxins. So this is the basic overview of hemolytic anemia which includes its types and its causes. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.